Hey everyone, it's Jamie from Independent Street NOLA, and I'm here with my friend Helen, the Crimson Cadaverous. Hi. And we are here to have our weekly celestial chat. Yes. New location? Yes. New information? Yes. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So it's for the week of 11 7 to 11 13. Yes. We got a lot of things going on. Yeah. We're it's, still in eclipse season right now. Yeah, uh, we're going to, we're in it to win it. And then we oh, yeah. also have the 11 11 portal. Yep. And I wanted to kind of say this when you, were, you and I were just talking. Um, you know, last week you were talking about you really felt last week's energy was still very Venus um, heavy. Yes. And I feel like this week it's kind of Mars heavy. Yes, very yeah. Mars heavy and just a lot going on with like release work. Yeah. A lot of release work, so, but in a good way. Right. So I think it's like still keeping us balanced. Yeah. Like we're just. Because Venus is still pretty active, so. It's Scorpio season. It's watery, moving through it. Yep. Okay. All right, so Monday, uh, the moon will move into Taurus. Yep. Um, and Venus will be squaring Saturn. Yes. So that means they're going to be apart or across from each other. Yep. And in that chess match. Yep. So definitely um, both um, are considering our values and our boundaries. Um, just kind of going into this eclipse, like what, what really matters to us. Yeah, I agree. Um, Tuesday is yep. the eclipse. Yeah, is the eclipse early in the morning. I think uh, peaks around 5 a.m. here in New Orleans, Central Time. I'm going to be out. Are you going to do it? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to be out watching it. Um, it is a total blood moon. Okay. Um, and the reason why it's a blood moon is because it takes on a red hue. Mm -hmm. Um, My place, favorite. Yes, in the places that we can see it, which of course is in the United States this year. So dramatic. Uh, but just it in time up. for election day. Yes, Sorry, it's I'm on election day. Yep. So, you know, Uranus is very active during this as well, conjuncting yes. the moon during the lunar eclipse. So right. expect the unexpected. And so what that means, you guys, again, is conjunctions is that the moon and Uranus are like right on top of each other, uh, mathematically degree wise. Yes. Yeah, not like actual degree wise. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the conjunction. Yeah, that would be a little weird if yeah. they were right on top of each other. We'd be in trouble. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, but as so we say. we've got, again, we've been talking about this T-square between the Scorpio energy, mm -hmm. the Aquarius energy, and the Taurus energy. Right. And again, that we always, you know, the last couple of weeks we've had, you know, nothing really in Leo energy, mm -hmm. but that's kind of how we're going to break the tension. So it's, we're still here. We keep coming back to this fucking T-square. Sorry. Right. Sorry that I'm swearing. That's all right. Okay. I've been feeling we're this T-square. for kids. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I've been feeling this T-square. Yes. Like, um, through the past, what, three weeks? Yes. Yeah. We've been sitting in that energy that, like, you know, is heavy on the Scorpio energy, heavy on the Aquarius, heavy on um, the Taurus. And these are all the fixed signs, you guys. And so we are really just, like, busting through, like... Untying the knot. Yes. Untying yes. the knot with untying that. Untying the knot is a good way of putting Thank it. Thank you. And I think, again, how we break the tension is, you know, by completing it and turning it into a grand cross with the Leo energy. Right. And yeah. Leo energy is heart-based. Right. It's love. Right. You know, it's courage. It's, <clears throat> you know, it's compassion. Right. And yeah. I think whatever comes up for us, which is eclipse season, and I, I'm sure everyone's having their own eclipse stories yes i know i am um but whatever comes up for us break the tension with love right right and and i think it's important to mention that you know that doesn't mean you go around hugging everybody and you know if you want to be a you know right with permission of course of course but it's more what is the best way to approach this with love and right. sometimes that's tough love sometimes that's self-love right you know whatever we need to do to approach this from the heart right whatever it, comes our way I agree I agree that's really beautiful and I also see you know Leo um, because it is a fire sign um, is the consciousness of fire yes um, so which is like new ideas and like inspiring yourself inspiring others yes. um, but also reaching for that higher that higher self and like you were saying like even with like self uh, or tough love yes. you know but like burning things down yeah you know letting mm -hmm. it go to ashes Ooh. bring it coming when Bring there's it nothing back. left to burn, you have to set yourself on fire. There you go. Yeah. You know? And so I really do feel like um, these tinch, I mean, these T squares with these fixed signs are really asking us to go over this idea of love. Yes. Um, and what we think about it and how we communicate it to ourselves and to others. And I say that as on the same day, the sun is conjunct Mercury. Yes. And Mercury is the planet of communication right 
Mercury was the messenger of the gods, which I just love saying that. Yeah. I know. It's so dramatic. I love it. Um, and then again, you guys, that conjunction is that the sun and Mercury are like right on top of each other. Yep. Mathematically. Right. Yes. Opposite uh -huh. the moon and Uranus and all that. So it's, they're kind of looking across at each other. Right. And they're saying, okay, um, how can we communicate this differently? You know, before we thought this was showing love and actually it didn't work out very well. Yeah. You know, it yeah. was like codependency or... Yeah, we're know. definitely releasing a lot of that. With yeah. This, especially with that Scorpio energy. I think like the old school paradigm of Scorpio is like the secrets, the lies, the things we yeah. don't say out loud. The manipulation. Yeah. And yeah. we're letting that go. Right. That's we're all that, that lunar, lunar and south node. Sorry. Lunar I think a lot of the energy with this, especially with Uranus being involved, because he's just like, you know, throw a firecracker at it, <laughs> blow it up and be done. Yeah. You know, he's just like, you know, you've been carrying around this baggage long enough. Right. Time to be done. Time to be as done. As an act of self-love. Right, it right. It is an act of self-love to leave it, the stuff behind that right. is no longer ours. It's an act of self-love. It's not an act of, like, giving up or quitting. Yeah. Or, you know, there's a lot of people that I talk to that keep, like, feeling this guilt because they do want to move forward, you know? And so, I mean, if you feel guilty, that's okay, right? At right. the same time. Work through it. Yeah, work through it. There's yeah. nothing... The thing you're here in order to put yourself first. You're yes. here to explain, like, yeah, this is my life. I can do this. And I feel like low Scorpio vibe would be like guilty, manipulating, right. hanging on to that feeling, hanging yeah, on, exactly. Your pinchers. And we're not doing that, no. you know, because the next day on Wednesday we've got the sun opposite Uranus. So right. it's like, again, expect the unexpected and going with it because that's like, you know. And you that's guys, where we're at right now. Right. And you guys have got to remember, the sun rules Leo. Yes. That's its ruler, you mm -hmm. know? And so it is. It's really bringing in this fire. It's really lighting up self-love. Yeah. And how that looks and love for others and how that looks and new ideas for that being there with that um, Mercury, um, even on Wednesday, I guess. Yes. I guess it's still conjunct or probably a little past. Pretty, pretty close. Pretty yeah. Close. We still have all yeah. those planets kind of close to one another, just still continuing in this like T-square energy that we've been in for a while. And just to go back to this um, lunar eclipse blood moon, because I like how it just keeps getting longer. Oh, yeah. 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 Jeez. Okay. Um, but also this energy goes out for six months. Yes. Um, and then there was something else I was going to say, and I totally forgot, but whatever. If it comes back to me, I, we'll I'll just, there. I'll interrupt you. Yeah, and exactly. Okay. Um, but on Wednesday, the moon that was in Taurus will finally move into Gemini. Yes. Yeah. Getting a little lighter, lighter feeling to it. Airy, yes. Airing it out. Airing things out. Airing things get, out. You know, Taurus can be a little, a little fixed. Right, right. Tough. A little tough. It's the bull. It is. Um, but then we get the twins coming in and we get like, Mercury yeah, squaring yeah, yeah. Saturn, yeah. you know, and we're kind of just like, again, thinking about our structures and boundaries and like what really matters to us, you know, because again, we've got Venus trying Neptune the same day. Yes. And this is um, Thursday, correct? Yep. Okay. Finding a balance between like, romantic, passionate love, and like that unconditional love that we have for the universe. Right, and I think this is one way I'm reading this as well, is like Mercury scaring Saturn is that Saturn wants that um, like discipline and yes. uh, stability. Yes. Um, and so they're having that conversation about it, right? Um, and then Venus trining Neptune is like saying like, but it can be loving. It yes. can be dreamy. Be it can be softer, yes. right? It doesn't mean you have to do 30 push-ups before right. you find the love of your life. No, nope. you know? it, it can, can just happen. Like right. you can let things flow. Right, and you can just be stable in this idea that you're trusting that things can be stable. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yes. I yeah. believe so. Okay. I like it. I've been here before. Yeah. Okay. So on Friday, the moon will move into Cancer. And what's our sun doing? <laughs> um, so with that, before the moon moves into Cancer, we have a conjunction with the moon in Gemini with Mars in Gemini. Oh. We're just kind of a little power up. Okay, you got know, you. powerful. Got you. Um, same in, day. So I'm just going to interrupt you. Oh, yeah. Moon in Gemini. Yeah. Yeah. Conjunct Mars. Yeah. Because Mars is retrograde in Gemini. Yes. There's that Mars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of a power boost. Okay. On 11-11, which is the 11-11 portal. I love. And I always think about, I always think about the four of wands. Oh, yeah, It's like yeah. the two, you know, 11-11, yeah. basically right next to each other. And it's like, almost like a portal of celebration. Yeah. That's kind of how I see this one. Because sun square Saturn, so it's like 
kind of feeling good about the foundations we've already built I mean, for ourselves. That's like a lot of like positive energy. Yes. That's that yeah. solar plexus. Like it's I'm like squaring a, Saturn. I'm bouncing it off me. Like it's just kind of like a quiet confidence. That yeah. Energy, and I think we're. We're definitely encouraged to celebrate that on 11-11, I think especially. On Friday. Yes. Yes. Um, I wanted to say something, too, about the moon in Gemini. Oh, okay. So the moon in Gemini, you know, the moon is our intuition, right? Yes. And it is in Gemini, which is the twins, so it's speaking about this. And the fact that it's on top of Mars, who's retrograde, mm -hmm. it's still continuing that conversation about how we can show up. Like, how can the divine yes. masculine in us show up and move things and move things forward mm -hmm. like that's already here and make it better yes keeping with that venus training neptune but like making it softer yeah right but just keep gathering information gathering mm -hmm. information Definitely it, it gathering doesn't have to like fly forward no because mars is retrograde yeah he's just like taking our time yeah. building our foundation because again saturn's there he's so. moving in yeah maybe getting a new rug yeah seeing if he likes the couch yeah yeah exactly i like it Okay, Saturday, Moon and Cancer. Yes. All and right. And then we also have Mercury trining Neptune. Okay, good, good, good. So, trying is lots of good vibes. Yeah, like, I mean, it's like a, you know, thinking dreamy kind of, you know, almost like really using our imagination day. Yes. Day to use our imagination. Because Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Yes. Right? Yes. And so, as we just said, yeah. um, Mercury is the messenger of the gods, yes. but also Mars is retrograde mm -hmm. in Gemini, and Gemini's ruler is training Neptune. Yes. So I still think that goes with the theme of that divine masculine, yes. what it looks like now, being dreamy. Mm -hmm. Maybe he finds the perfect couch. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and he's very like artistic while he's doing it. Yeah. yeah. He's like, he's he here. He upcycles something. Oh, I love yes. it. That moon in Cancer, oh, Cancer is yeah. the home. Oh, yeah. Let's talk Definitely. about how to be um, intuitive. Yes, we can upcycle a couch on that. Day. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you have it sextiling, or, or you, you have it in the notes that it's also sextiling the north node. Right. Okay. So, like, that's, um, that's, that's just Taurus. like moving in the right direction. Yeah. Yep. And it's like we feel like we're moving in the right direction on that day. And it, it goes back to like Scorpio season with the feelings, yes. right, and the emotion, yes. right, and how which we're about to talk about that the next yes, day. Yes, which we are um, on Sunday. Yes, the moon feelings. is still in Cancer. Yes. Okay. Um, we, we find ourselves in this like beautiful grand water trine. Okay. Um, which is you know the moon in Cancer, but then also trining the Sun and Mercury and a little bit of Venus. Yes. In Scorpio, also trining Neptune and Pisces. Okay, so, so do you want to explain the trine? Yes. So it's basically um, four signs, so mm -hmm. 120 degrees right. away from each other. Okay. So in the same uh, element. Element, yes. And then a grand trine is basically actually the whole triangle, so okay. all three points. And so we have this grand trine, correct? Yes. And so it's like it's basically like a contained energy because it's a triangle. Mm -hmm. And contained in that is this like emotional like burst almost Ooh, it's like um, a birth yeah yeah and so it's like we've got the moon in cancer so that's you know very um very nurturing yeah um but then also with the sun and mercury and scorpio it's like you know letting things go right definitely you know the burning release. yeah yep and talking then, about like, it maybe with yourself maybe yeah. with another maybe journaling this day yep and then yeah. neptune and pisces is like also connecting with our higher self right and this might be a good day because that neptune is retrograde to go over things that you are letting go of yes. and seeing how much better you are moving forward or just right. seeing how it did its job to get you to where you were supposed to be and now you can keep going yeah much like your moving situation exactly yes, you keep moving. yeah and it's water okay. flows That's right what water does so yeah I allow think it just this allow is, this is just a week of like you know very you know necessary peaceful release and letting it go well and then going with this letting it go on the same day venus is sextiling pluto yes so like letting go very harmoniously i know right of, like you know whatever's kind of doesn't align with our values. And anymore. we've been doing that. Yeah. We've been doing that. It's like letting go of the old paradigms. Continuing. Right, you guys. And it comes up in different ways, right? And that's like, I feel like when people talk about like the different layers. Yes. Um, so it comes in through water sometimes. So it comes in through earth sometimes. Yes. Sometimes it comes in with a mixture. But it's mm -hmm. this whole idea of that we just keep exfoliating. Mm -hmm. And then we are shown a different way to like 
do it a little deeper or yes. see like, oh, I, you know, I did a good job already. I'm just going to splash around the water yes. or things like that. It doesn't always have to be a chore. No. Um, and so this Sunday, this Sunday, the 13th. This Grand Water Time looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks beautiful. We're talking about like, take a bath. Yes, like yeah. take a bath, go by the water, go swimming. Give thanks. Yes. Always like give thanks. Cleansing. It's yeah. definitely very cleansing and release to that cleansing. Yeah. We release at the beginning. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Because also, I was going to say, the moon is sextiling Uranus. So again, it's cool. Let it go, man. Expected. Yeah. So whatever comes up that you need to let go of, just let it go. Let it, yeah. This is eclipse season. Yeah. And it's always the unexpected. Yep. It's always the unexpected, but it's definitely the unexpected with Uranus. Yeah. So it's, it's just... Whatever it is, just let it go. Yeah. What is he, the rebellion, planet of rebellion? Uh, yes, planet of rebellion, the great awakener. You All know, those things. He's the great upheaver. You know, he's always just making it happen. Yeah, I'm ruled by Uranus. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you know. Oh, wow. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. I'd just rather have you, like, maybe yes. say, give it a different. Yes. <laughs> so I don't want to keep saying the same stuff. Okay, friends, this is our video for the week. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us via Instagram or YouTube channels. Yes. Um, and then um, we we're thinking, we don't know for sure, but we might do a live. Yes. Next Sunday. We'll, we'll announce it if that's what right. We're doing. Yeah, we're so stay tuned. Yes, yeah, stay tuned. White Expect the unexpected. Uh, yeah, <laughs> good. That's yeah. Good. All right, guys, see you later. All right, bye.